we're back in the studio and now we are going to uh, work some more on this I want to try to get some of this in today uh, hopefully we get this pretty close to finished um, I'd like to see that happen today so I'm going to work on, uh, on this wheelbarrow a little bit I'm going to start out with my number six again that's the number six bright I'm going to get this a little darker I want this a little bit darker so I'm going back into my Payne's Gray, and I'm just going to uh, fill this in a little bit more, see how that comes out. Might have to get some more Payne's Gray onto my palette, but uh, we'll see. Now we want to try to straighten up some of these lines, too, if we can. I may need an angle brush here um, to get into these corners. I'm not sure how this is. Well, it might go pretty good there. Very good. get a little water into my Payne's Gray. Now that we have some of those lupins in, I can go around them. So we got that nicely done. So let's go back into that part, uh, get some of that blue in there. I'm going to wipe out my brush. I'm going into my, I believe this was my uh, cerulean blue. My basics, yes. Oh no, cobalt blue. I'm sorry, cobalt blue. And okay, notice something. Here. No, that's straight. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of go around like that. Just kind of dry brush on top of this. Picked up some white along the way, so I don't know. I guess that was in my blue. Now it's a lot darker in through here, <clears throat> so let's get that a little darker. And it kind of comes down into a almost like an arrow shape right here. to a point right here but this is very dark in here and we're just gonna kind of blend it a little bit I 
can see we want to leave some of that pink showing through. That's really important here. Because it's the way the sun, I guess, is hitting this. Then in through here, I want the top part dark here. Okay. And it does come down here, but it does start to get a little lighter as we go into the, the this part right in here. So I'm going to just wipe my brush a little bit because we really definitely want to see that pinkish color coming through. Just going back and forth here, letting that pink come through. I want that to be a little darker. Kind of just brushing that in, making it dark, but I hardly have any paint on my brush. And here I may have to put a little bit more in there so that it really kind of shows up. Um, more of the pink is through here, so let's get that wiped off a bit. And I am going to make this a little darker too. Um, <clears throat> I think that would be working out much better for us instead of that turquoisey blue. We'll make it this shade here, the cerulean. some purple. My uh, hmm. my palette's pretty well loaded. This is very thin there. And I am going to pick up my Payne's Gray, I'm not rinsing off my brush. <clears throat> Just kind of go around some of this uh, pink here, letting some of it show through, but not everything. It's just kind of like... <clears throat> the wheelbarrow comes up a bit. a little thing a little bit of it showing oh dear once again my picture falls this it's just an indication that that's a rim we don't want to overdo it there okay so I'm gonna go back into my cerulean or my cobalt I'm sorry kind of get some of these lines out of here
put a little water on my brush kind of just like to kind of blend this a little bit maybe like a glazy kind of thing letting that pink show through to show through but you also want to cover this that it's smooth looking okay and you got some of that showing through which is what we want exactly very good there okay uh, it's a little bit darker right about here so you know put a just like here it's a little darker so this is a little darker here <clears throat> just put it like that come back to that because I'm pulling it off that's what happens sometimes that acrylic because it's a cheaper acrylic it'll do that um Okay, I'm going to rinse this out now, and I'm going to be working on my wheelbarrow right now. I want to get that pretty pretty close to in there, you know. I want to get this taken care of. So, uh, let's see here. I'm going to go with my raw, um, uh, raw sienna. A little orange, my Aza orange. Blending it. I'm going to pick up a little red. And that's all crimson. Just kind of blending these all together here. Make that a little darker on top here I think would be able to show better just giving it a shadow there we go okay so uh, it's pretty light in there so I don't have any yellow out on my palette right now I used it up I'm going to stick some of that out there. And that's my Cad Yellow Medium. I mix a little bit of white with it. And in here it's pretty light. And then I'm going to put my orange on top. Some of this is real light in here. And that's just the highlight so we want to make sure we get that in there so it shows up when we put our orange on top it's lighter and things see makes that nice and light about here it's kind of like a little bit of a oh, there we go and we're gonna get some of our orange with a little umber because right in here it's a shadow kind of like a shadow there we need a little bit more of the umber has to show as a shadow here and a little bit of a shadow in through here definitely a bigger shadow through here got a shadow that comes 
here and here. And this is a very big dark darkness here. So I'm just using my umber, my raw umber here. think I'm going to use some of my Payne's Gray right here because I want that really dark in here. off my brush I'm going to put a little bit more I think what I'm going to put out is my cad red well I, I've been using the uh, naphtha crimson so I'm going to continue it's probably a good idea if I have enough here I have to get some more of my naphtha crimson lightly like a glaze here we're just glazing on top of that glazing is just lightly going over it with a little bit of you put some water in there however you want to do it then we're gonna go into our umber and we're gonna make this this. Oh, that's not right. I need some umber. This is my raw umber. over this way. So I really want to kind of blend this so it looks like a straight line. And it's very dark right underneath here. Darken through here. I'm going to go into my uh, Payne's Gray. It's darken through here too. It's like a shadow, I guess you would say. Now, there's a little bit of a highlight on the side here. I'm going to get that little highlight. And I'm going to just use my Azo orange. Put the highlight in. Which 
trying to get it straight. <laughs> And right in here, too, there's some light, so I'm going to get more of my Azo orange. And I'm just putting it right on the edge of my brush. If you can see that, just right on the edge. And just kind of highlighting that. On the edge, and it also is highlighted right on this edge. Also, we're just gonna go with that. All right, so now I have to get a little bit darker in through some of these areas. Um, I'm gonna put my phthalo green, a little bit of phthalo green right in here. This might be a little wider than I really wanted, so I'm going to fix that with some of my Payne's Gray. Because I don't want that as wide as it is. Okay. And I'm going to fix that other piece also. Let's see, I want to get into my umber. Just kind of make that a little bit better there. Probably a smaller brush would be better, but I'm just going to go with this. And I'm going to actually get a smaller brush, I think, because I want to... Um, Okay, this is my number two. It's a uh, flat, and I want to put my green in there. And this is phthalo green right in here. I'm gonna get that. Kind of blend it with my uh, Payne's gray that I have. I'm making it dark here. I'm going to fix some of that up too. All right, so now I've um, got some of that looking pretty good here. I want to lighten up a piece here. And I actually want to get some of this red, mix it with my Azo orange. my uh, Napsol Red, or my Napsol Crimson. And I'm just going to kind of go over some of this maybe with a little bit of a glaze. So I'm adding some water to that. I just want to kind of glaze up, because in the picture, it's kind of blurry. That might not work. That looks pretty dirty. Let me wash my brush away. You want to kind of make it nice and clean. All right, let's see here if I can get this glaze to just kind of glaze over this in some of these areas here. Oh, let's see here now. This kind of had a little bit of a Blending in there. Kind of just glaze over some of this, making it blurred out of some somewhat. This 
this is my uh, naphthol crimson is kind of thick so it comes on the brush kind of thick we don't want it too thick comes down here a little bit red here okay My painted picture keeps falling off my, and I think that's due to the fact that it's kind of messed up here and it won't stick. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see here. I'm going to get a little bit of my raw umber. I'm making a little bit of a. highlight here. Adding a little white to that. It's kind of too white. Okay, well we're just going to go like this for now. That's okay. Because it's going to come through here. down here so let me get my because a lot of this is brown but it's also um, part of that wheelbarrow and it's kind of grayish looking um, that is a Piece that comes over here. You can see it through here, but I think most of that's going to be covered anyway with those lupins. <clears throat> we have a gray that comes on top of this, so I'm going to put my Payne's gray right on top. And then I'm going to go into my white. Kind of just blend a little bit of that in there. And then there's some actual orange in here also. So we have some work to do there. using Payne's Gray right there. And I'm going to get some of my Azo Orange. Just kind of put that in there. Just kind of lighten that up a bit. Now, there's a couple of things I see that aren't right, so I'm going to go into my green, kind of make this a little bit more distinct here. This is just way too thick here, and it shouldn't be that way. There we go. And I'll bring that on down like it should be.
And uh, let's get that a little darker. A little darker. I think I'm going to have to get some more Payne's Gray out on my palette. some green and uh, we're gonna put some of that green in through here just to kind of give me a little edge here so I know what the heck is going on there okay all right so right where those oranges are it's green also so I'm gonna use some of my oxide green kind of darker in here a little dark green here that's not good. You want that a little different. Try to get those smoother. Okay, and that's pretty dark, so let me get some of my um, Payne's Gray out on my palette here. Okay, and that's my golden that I've been using. I want to get that dark back there. These are pretty darn dark. And there's one that's right in here. Some of the lupins are going to be covering that, but I just got to get it in there anyways. All right. And I think I'm going to get this a little bit wider right here. I'm going to lose that every couple of seconds, huh? All right. I have to have that there so I can follow it. So let me see if I can put it right there. Okay. Now I want to get a little orange in through this too because it needs to have some orange in there. So I'm going to go right into my Azo orange. Now I'm making that lighter, but it's actually going to be some red in that too. So I'm going into my red. Okay. Alright, uh, let's see. There's some darker orange. So I'm going to make some of the Azo orange darker. With some of my red. I'm just blending in that red with my Azo orange. So we want to have some depth in this. So 
So I'm just going very lightly, kind of just blending some of this together. Just kind of bringing it to a good spot here. I'm going to make this a little wider. And it should come over here like this. And this kind of comes in here too with uh, some of that. And it goes over like that a little bit. And it actually comes up a little, pretty close to coming up there. Okay, and um, some of that red right seen right in here okay. dark right in here so I'm using my umber for that and then it's like right here and then it comes over here just like that okay and I want to make that a really bright in there so I'm gonna go right into my azo orange right in here. Get some more of that over here. This is pretty big and through here. There we go. Alright. And I think I'm going to add a little red to my azo and put that in here it up a bit and now we can get this darker I have to go over that again because it is pulling up So, hopefully you like what I'm doing so far. Love to hear your comments. Sometimes you just have to keep working at this so it starts to work for you. There we go. That's starting to look pretty good now. Okay, so we want a little bit darker orange, so I'm going to add some of my azo into my red. Kind of just...
right, that's looking nice. Very good. Okay, so uh, let me get a little bit of yellow with white and just kind of some of this. Just kind of, it's like a wooden piece or something in here and just blend it. Just going to blend it. This is like wood in here. I guess this is what's holding it up. And then I'm going to go into my Payne's Gray because I just love Payne's Gray. And kind of, and right here, this is like the end of the, that uh, piece of wood that's holding the wheel on. All right, so I'm stepping back here. I like the way this is looking. I'm going to put a few highlights in uh, with some yellow onto my wheelbarrow. Um, it's just a highlight maybe here and here. There's some here too, like right in here. All right, so let's work on the um, wheel. Get that started. So in back here, this wheel is going to be like a brown, and we're going to just use our umber. Umber for this. Now I may have made that wheel too big. It looks kind of weird there. So I'm going to go into my green and fix that. I'll just get it down here. Because what's going to happen is the lupins are going over that too. So uh, I'm going to add a little coat of green on top of this. some on top of this one filling in the holes here darken through here so I want to get that all filled in I'm going to rinse out my brush okay so um, we've got like a grayish purpley color let's see so I'm going to mix up my purple that's that gray purple and I am going to put it in here I'm still using that little brush because this is a little closer details. Okay. And some Payne's Gray. Blend it. it out okay and um, let me get some red my Aza orange lots of it so we can get this real nice here I'm not even going to work that too much there because it looks really good. Okay, I want some of this dark umber here. Right in and about here. It is here. Because there's a spoke there, so we want that dark in there.
So usually what I like to do, because these are spokes, we have to make some depth into this so that it looks like there's something. So we'll just kind of like make a little so we know that's a spoke. Okay. All right. So we also have to make this look like there's something right here so that it blends also into that. This is pretty red, so we're just going to kind of blend it into that. Okay, and then we're going to get that spoke too, where we can see that it's coming into the center. Little uh, connection there. All right, another spoke is here. Whoops, that's a little light one, huh? Well, we'll make that darker. It gets darker, so. Okay, go into my red. Wait till that dries a little bit. As I say, I've got like a ton of uh, stuff going on here. Okay, we're going to make this dark in here. I'm using my Payne's Gray. This is kind of a dark green here, but I'm going to put my Payne's Gray down first. I'll get my Thalo green. Okay. I'm going to put Thalo green in here. Maybe put a little bit more of my Payne's Gray here, too, because this is all dark. It's like a dark because of the shadows. Get some of my oxide here. Put it in here. This. Because the other part of the wheel is underneath there, so you won't see it. There is part of the wheel that shows here, so I'm just going to get some of that darker. So it gives me an idea of where my darks are. Anyways, as it starts to shape up. Now, because we can't tell too much what's going on here, I'm going to go with a little bit of my Payne's Gray. Just kind of like doing a little glaze with this. Um, just to kind of darken this here so we kind of have an idea what's going on here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just blend it out. Just blend it out. Just so I know that that is a little darker because you can't tell, you know. So, <clears throat> just kind of blend it. So you see the crease. Because you want to see the crease. Glazing is real important when you're painting because it kind of gives it helps to give the depth, especially when you're doing portraits. <clears throat> now I can see something going on here that I'm not real thrilled with. Um, I'm going to go into my cobalt here. This 
this should be more pink here and I might just add some pink in there and then go over it again like a glazed kind of thing <clears throat> let me make some pink That's just white and that that's all uh, crimson. <clears throat> because there is pink that comes up through here. So let's get that in. We just might have to go like that. Just pulling it up. Just pulling it up. Just to keep it we know I'm just doing it very lightly very lightly I think that's kind of what we wanted a little bit of pink showing through See how I'm not even pressing real hard. I'm just pulling it up, dry brushed, kind of, to make it right in here too. We can pull that up. There we go. use too much pressure. Okay. I think um my issue really that makes it look funny is that this should be down a little further. Yeah, maybe this way. Because the angle is not what I want. This angle. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Much better. All right. So, the next thing we want to do, this has to be a little darker here. So, I'm going to go into my green, my phthalo green, a little bit of um, my Payne's Gray. I'm going to mix those two together. And I'm just going to kind of go right in here real lightly just kind of giving it a little edge now just kind of blending it a little bit nothing fancy here we don't want to get too carried away with it just kind of just giving it that little bit and uh, in through here well that's a little lighter anyways but it could be just a tad darker right in through here. Kind of like a little bit of a shadowy thing going on here. Little shadow. That's starting to look really good. Okay, let's see here. I noticed this could be a little straighter right here. Same here. And 
and uh, let's put a little brown into this piece right here just a tad here so and then make it a little darker right in here because this is going up into that part Just a little lightness, just right in through here, a little kind of light that comes down in through that. See, there's a little bit of a lightness right in here also. Let's see, right in through here. So I want that in there. doing something like I did here very light very lightly kind of giving some light onto this just the glaze just glazing it black because this really got to get dark here and I'm using my Galleria gallery Galleria or however you say it. just a tad Windsor Newton Galleria and I want this to be really dark in here so I've got to get that darkness so it shows depth at your pictures or paint you know pictures and study them because there's a lot of depth in these things and you can't vision it sometimes on a picture because of the picture it's flat so you have to kind of put your your telescopic lot <laughs> glasses on I guess to see them now Right in here, like I said, this comes up, kind of comes up and over like that. And this is like that also. So we got to get some of that darkness in there. This could probably be a four-part painting. I'm not sure because this is going to be very intense and we have to get all these little details in so that this looks normal. <clears throat> okay. I think we have all those now. All right. So I'm going to step back for a little bit and look at these and see what we have. And um, we'll be back. All right, so uh, I did a little repair work here. Um, when I'm looking at my painting or my picture, this was kind of smaller. So I wanted to get that in there. Um, it's a little bit smaller I measured it and decided to make that because it just wasn't looking right so I'm going to 
go back into my cobalt blue and just kind of dry brush a little bit over this right in here definitely have to do that I want to get that down in there because it is a little darker through here but I'm just kind of dry brushing it in nothing too intense and uh, I'm just going to kind of go over some of this just so it's not so like a line there. We don't want that line. Just grabbing a little bit more paint. Nothing too heavy on my brush. Just lightly going over this. Just lightly right in here it's really kind of dark darker because it's a corner and we want that corner to kind of come in like that it comes in on an angle and this here we can make that just come out a little bit more too Okay, just kind of brushing up, 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 up. Get more blue. Guess I'm needing a new brush. This is starting to go. Just bring it up, just light light strokes, nothing heavy, nothing heavy, very light touch, very light touch. Very, very light. I can even go this way a little bit just to, that might still be a little wet from my work. So we'll go over that again once it dries pretty good. All right, so I rinse that out, and I think I want to work a cup uh, on a couple of these before I continue with my um, wheel over here. I want to. Well, I'd like to get this a little bit better. Also, let's see here. There's a little bit of grayness in there. I'm just gonna grab some of my white and some of my Payne's gray. of a grayish color in through here. So I'm just kind of going over that a little bit. It's kind of like brought in, but it's a darker gray. I think I need a darker gray here. A little bit darker. Because it is in shadow. Some of it's like covered up with those those fl flowers there. Could even be a little darker, really. I think I'll get that a little bit darker. Kind of has a little. And I think the wheel comes over top of that, so we're going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to rinse that out. And I want to get a little bit more of an orangey brown in there. So I'm going to put some of my Azo orange into my 
raw amber or raw sienna i'm sorry and right here we could have a little bit more orange coming through there and actually right in here where that wheel is it's going to kind of come down there Just a tad of orange here. Let me get some of that red. There's like a thing that comes down and over, something like that. Comes around out. Okay. And then there's a little bit that just comes around here like that. Okay, these little details make the wheelbarrow more authentic looking. Just a little tad of red in there. Now this here spoke, it's coming down this way, and then it comes down like that. So. I just want to get that in there just that way. Maybe I'll just add a little bit of the lighter. It has to be red though, but I'm just trying to lighten it up so that I can get it to do what it's supposed to do. Attach there. And then there's something that comes right over this away and up. And that's pretty wide, so we're going to get that a little wider. When that dries, we'll put the uh, red in there. All right, so here we need to get that red. So I'm going to rinse out my brush. Get some red in there the way it's supposed to be. that out and get my little um, that was my number six brush that I was using now I'm going to my number two and I'm going to work in a little detail here with my raw umber I may have to get some more of that out on my palette but we'll see how this works because uh, seems to dry out pretty quickly, but we're just kind of just giving it a little edge here so that it looks There's just this little thing here that kind of connects to that. So that's going to be a little bit red or darker. This is coming down here. And then of course you got we've got our edge here. We've got that edge is the edge on that. As well as here. And here. So we're just kind of like very lightly putting that in there. Just kind of shading it in looking at where the spoke ends, making a little bit of a shadow. There's kind of a bigger shadow right in here. Okay. And this one goes in like that. All right. And this one kind of just blends in somehow. Okay. All right, so I think that this um, lupin is going to cover some of this, but I still want to get some of that in there because we don't know how much is going to cover.
into that. And then the grasses are going to cover that part. So I've got most of that in, and I think that looks pretty good. Just rinse out my brush, kind of come back with some of that red, and just kind of, whoop, go into this, kind of blend it a bit. Blend this a little. Just kind of like glaze over it so it looks more natural. All right. So I think I want to just kind of, well, I have to give a little bit of a highlight here. So let me get that. I'm going to use my um, raw sienna, mix a little white into it. And there's a highlight that falls right onto this here. Right there, a little highlight. So, we want to get that in there. Okay. All right, so let's work on these lupins a bit. I'm going to get some of those lupins in, like I said, and I'm going to put some white. Well, we're not going to make it exactly white. We're going to add a little pink to it but it's going to make it look like it's white. So I'm just mixing some of that red, that naphthol crimson with white. And we're going to kind of go into some of these. This is where the details are going to be important. And as we get up here, it gets a little wider. You need a smaller brush to do this. All right, let's go into the red. I'm not washing off my brush or any of that. Just put a couple little heavier shades in there. Just using the same brush that has the white on it and we're going to make some of these little pieces here. Okay, now let me go into my pink again. There's a tad of green in here too, so we gotta get some of that green in there. So I'm gonna just go into my oxide green, and I'm gonna mix a little white with that also, because it's just very pale in there, not that much green. So I just want a little bit of green coming through here on some of these. some of that background too. We need to get some of that background in there. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, I want to get a little bit of my raw sienna. 
I'm still using that number two. And we're going to put just a tad of that on here. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe that off on my my rag there. Just put some of this in here. All right, now we kind of want to lighten up some of this uh, here too. I'm going to go into my raw sienna, and there's a little bit of a round, looks like a little piece of something there that's part of that that leaf. Same right here. And we're going to kind of work on the leaves here. Rinsing that out. Picking up some of my phthalo green and some of my yellow. And I'm just going to outline some of this. Now we might want that a little lighter because it's a little too dark. We really want a very pale green here. And the rest of these are kind of darker, so I'm going right into my darker side of that and putting in some dark here. Oh, that's a little too light yet. Too light yet. So I'm putting some of my phthalo green into that so I can make it a little darker. Actually, that probably could be a little darker. So I'm going to get some of my raw umber. Let's put that in there. Kind of gray it down some. Get a little darker. This has to be pretty dark here. Same here, we want that darker. This one here is a little dark under here. Okay. Now there's some light going on around that. So in order for that to pop out and for us to see it, we need to get something a little lighter around there possibly even a little darker. So I'm going to go into my Payne's Gray. There is some dark in here. Something that's going to pop some of that out so that we can see it. Okay. And some of our light green. Thalo with some yellow. They're barely uh, able to see them. Now, um, in through here, there's some like light colors, so I'm just going to put something light in here, like little, kind of reminds me of some leaves here. So I'm going the side of my brush, bringing it down like that, just the side of my brush, and uh, it's not that much but we just have to make sure that we get it in there so that it looks like there's something growing here. So 
So for this one, we got to put some white around that also. So let's do that <clears throat> with our pale green or a yellow green mixture. Just on top of it like that. Just a little shading. It's amazing what it can do. down with a nice blue bluish green so I'm going to mix some of my cobalt some of my phthalo and a tad of white just a touch just a touch so it has that bluish green color <clears throat> right in here just like a little and there's one here also and then it tops off with a little bit of that green um, yellow green mixture just like a little shadowy thing not a shadow but some light here, so I might have to uh, wait for that to dry a bit. All right, so let's let's get these lupins in here. Uh, let's work on those. Those are purple. I just want to see if I can get that yellow green mixture in there a little bit. Before I move on, before I forget to do this, right there, and it's just a tad there. some light through here but kind of green here and this just looks a little out of place and I'm not real thrilled with that so kind of, I'm going to get some of that blue mixture also I'm going to put that on that too just kind of dull it down a little just doesn't look so bright in there. Okay. Well, let's work on some of the lupins that are purple. Alright, uh, let's see. Now, down here they're pretty dark. So I'm going to mix some of my Payne's Gray. And I think I'm going to use my uh, cobalt blue. Because it really needs to be like a dark purple in some of these shadowy areas here.
Okay. Now let's get some brighter. Well, we'll use just that straight purple gray to get in some of these areas here. And uh, you might be wanting to use a little bit of a dry brush. I think it would work better here. going to go into our white. We have to go over it again. some more of the blue in here, purpley shade here. It's up, starts to lose its little bit of purple. We're just going to make some bigger ones here because inside those are purple. So, I'm going to stack that up like that some green in through there. So, let's see here. This one. Okay, let's see. There's that. that the lighter, lighter. There is some white in this one. A little bit of white in that one. These are real white in through there. So let's get some dark. I'm going to go into the dark. I'm going to wipe my brush. There's a lot of drawing on this part here because uh, the way the lupins are shaped. one here. It's got a little bit of purpley that goes through that. Right here. And there's a little tad of white on that too. And uh, let's see. Let me get this darker here. A little bit there. Get that darker. I 
They're starting to shape up and look like something. I think the way this looks to me, there's like a little hook onto this. This one here has a little bit of a white thing that comes in here. Now there's some white here. And there's a piece of purple, so I'm going to get that mixing here. I want that darker. So there has to be like a little darkness in through here. So if you're looking at this real close, you have to be uh, pretty accurate with this. It's almost like drawing a person. You want it to look like lupins because these are so close in, in proximity to where... Okay, let's see here. To us, so we have to make sure these are pretty accurate. Okay, let me get some dark blue, purple here. Okay, this is going to have to dry a bit because that loop in there is getting a little too muddy looking and I don't want that to happen. Let's see. rinsing out my brush because I don't want to mix that dark up with the white. Let's see here. Okay. Okay. This one has to be that. Get some white in this now. Get some of those white ones in.
big purple one right there. Let me get that big purple one there. Big purple one. And it's right in here. And I want to get it dark also, so I'm going to go into my Payne's Gray. didn't darken it up any all right let's see here we got to get some of these white pieces in so I can kind of almost know where those lupins go or the floor flower part of the lupin so I think there's one right here right there these here kind of go up into a point which is quite interesting I think they go into a point and then some are just little floral things that like in here they're just little white floral buds I guess that are on here some kind of come over this way kind of stacked up on each other I gotta leave that green in there because that's part of these two. So, and then at the, the very tip, it's kind of yellowish. So, maybe I'll just go into some of my yellow and mix it with some white. And tap that in there. Make a nice pale yellow. Kind of just tap it in. Tap it in, tap it in, like that. And then tap some of that brown, or the green, ooh. Well, let's tap the brown in and then we can put the green in top of it. Because that's the first layer, it has to be in there. So we're gonna tap that in. I got some of the green in, but I think we need to make that just a little darker in there. Okay. Okay. And actually it kind of gets a little darker so we can put a little darkness down and through here. Some of it gets a little darker green all around some of this. It's kind of outlined with the green. Okay. In between all these, it's green. like part of the flower too, you know. All right, let's see here now. Uh, okay, I want to get kind of a looping over here. Let me rinse that out. Uh, I'm going to use some of my blue green here. Or my, yeah, my blue, dark blue, purple. Because it looks like there's like one that comes over here. So I'm going to put that in. And then there's one that curls up over, which is like here. Curls up. And then got that one. And this one here is purpley, like curls over. And uh, I think that's pretty good there. Maybe a piece right in here. Okay. And 
all of these have that little bit of a purpley color. So I'm going to add a little purpley to it. So it's uh, looking more natural. This one here, okay. Um, there's one that comes straight up here. Here. And this one has that right in the middle, okay? Okay, now I gotta get some white around a couple of these. Like this one here needs some white. Oh, that's just a little too thinned out too much. Where was I at? Right here. This one here. This one here. Over. There we go. Okay, I think we're moving right along on this. It's going to take some time. It's not going to be a quickie. Like I said, it's uh, it's a little intense. Need a little bit of my raw umber out on my palette here. Just waiting for some of those to dry so I can put some more white in there. A um, little raw umber. I want to get kind of like outlining this. I'm just using the side of my brush. Not the flat part. Okay, and I'm going to get a little bit of my raw sienna. Kind of just pull that up a little bit into that. Okay, comes up a little bit further. Just kind of blending those sides with that. And a little bit of my oxide. And there's some in through here that's kind of like that. through here. Tapping those in there. The greens. Put some of these lighter things around here. Just kind of giving a little structure. Okay. Okay. Now there's some details here we could put a couple um couple strands of grass kind of just make it look a little a 
nothing crazy just get a few in there so it kind of brings it out a little bit a little dimension oh uh, let's see here get a little bit of my yellow one here and uh, just kind of And there's a couple orangey colors too. Just bringing them through here just a little bit. And then we could bring some light ones up. Now your dark is going to recede. And that's what you want, and your light is going to come forward. Darks recede, lights come forward, and that's what we want. We want some light in here, some lighter shades of grasses. And if you kind of break it up, it looks like something is covering it. So break it up a little bit. Looks like some other things are going on there. couple little things of grass and it makes it look like uh, there's something going on. You can even bring some from over here. Um, like that. A couple just to kind of extend from out there. They're coming down this way. Get some of that Rossiana and put some of those in too. You know, just to make this look a little bit more realistic and interesting. Okay, let me rinse that out. I'm going to tap a little yellow into some of this here. Just to kind of give it a little bit of a... Oops. Red, that's new good. New good. So it looks like we have most of this uh, uh, part done. Still taking a little time with the lupins because they're a little harder to do. There's a lot more uh, work involved trying to get those to look nice and natural. The pink one didn't look too bad, but the purple one is a little bit more intense because we have to make it look more real because it's larger and it's closer here. There's more, you know, there's a little bit of closeness. So, we have to make sure it looks like uh, something's happening with these, you know.
think I like that just straight paints gray. It just kind of pops it out better. little shadowy effect you know so that's what we're trying to look for like a little shadowy effect with these and we're getting there and it takes time so you got to be patient when you're doing this you can't be rushing through it because uh, that just won't work won't work Pretty tough painting. You better be a little bit more experienced here. A little bit more experienced with this. Just going to go very lightly here. All right. Now look at that looks real nice. I like it. Once I get this other one in, it'll really be uh interesting how we get this all together now there's like a little bit of I'm noticing just a tad of orange up on top of these things here nothing real elaborate but just a touch touch just a touch and then um, it gets a little bit more green so let's get some of that green back up in here separate some of these lupins up. Kind of almost goes like that, sort of. Kind of rounds up. Okay. And I think I like that one a lot. So, we're just going to go with that. 
Um, now we'll start on the next looping. Get that one in. Okay. We want to get a nice big bunch of leaves down. So I'm going to go into my green, my phthalo uh, green and yellow mixture, and I'm going to make some nice big leaves in through here. I'm just using the side of my brush to do this. Just using that yellow green that I mixed before. And now I'm going to go right into my phthalo green and kind of put a little dark in through this. a leaf that goes way over so I'm going to get my yellow green again there's one that comes way over here so I'm just kind of like getting that in it's way over kind of just filling some of that in And I am going to go with some dark phthalo green with some of the um, Payne's Gray and kind of get some of that up and through here a little bit just to have that in there. I might not even need it in there, but I just want to make sure that we're covered here because these lupins are going to come down through there. I'm going to get some to go over this wheel here. And uh, let's see, we're going to put some of this too. Get some of my yellow green mixture. green, yellow, green. And my darker green. a leaf. I can hardly see it. There is one there. Let's see if I can like, lighten that up a bit. There we go. There. Okay. Let me step back. Okay, we're looking very nice. Very nice. Alright, I'm going 
doing good now. We're getting there. Very nice. <laughs> 